We've been working on this exhibition now for about two and a half years, and we've had amazing experiences going around meeting some pretty amazing people who are involved in, in the design field and some of the, the great craftspeople of the province. And uh, so we're hoping that this will open up a whole new um, interest in locally made um, craft and design in BC uh, from that period and hope to hope it will inspire younger people to A, collect and B, inspire their new ideas. My background is in making furniture and, and you're always looking through magazines and getting ideas and I, I used to have a subscription to Domus and uh, Apatari magazine and we're rummaging through finding pictures. Just very seldom do you ever see anything about Canada. When we first started getting into this thing, uh, most of the stuff, in particular the Scandinavian stuff that people are very interested in now, I mean, I've had all sorts of pieces that I might have bought for 20 or $30 and then turned around and sold them for 50 But um, it, it's the, a lot of the stuff, the BC and Canadian design stuff has been, um, it's a little bit under the radar and uh, people are more conditioned to buying the well-known things they see in magazines and they don't quite know what to make of a lot of the local and Canadian design pieces. But I just, I've always felt that that we, we had some amazing designers and, and some great factories and the work is unique and I, I could never really quite understand why uh, there wasn't a larger segment of the population interested in it. But then so you, that, I guess you'd, you'd, you'd probably realize though that I guess there wasn't a large population because there was not a lot of it really. Right. And I, so what were the, you know, when you think about what were people buying in the 50s mm -hmm. that were landing here, well, that, I think that's something about modernism too, that we have to clear up that, that really there was a very small percentage of people interested in you know, really pure modernism. Um, most people had a, a mixture. Exactly. And, and the interiors, if you look through the Western Homes of the Living, the interiors were quite often uh, matting from Chinatown and a bamboo chair, possibly a couple of modernist pieces. But in the early 50s, a lot of the really great Scandinavian stuff hadn't really quite hit the market. I mean, there were stores in the early 50s and mid 50s. Yes. But, you know, people's uh, um, uh, taste hadn't really fully developed and they didn't have a, a large exposure to modernism. So the, the interiors of a lot of the houses were really quite almost like summer camps, a modernist house with a summer camp feel to it. And then by the 60s, of course, that all started to change and it's a lot more sophisticated. Well, and I think that the, the artists that were developing and becoming famous in the 50s. Yes. And the houses they were designing. Yes, the houses were very modern. Exactly. And the and art was modern. Modern, yeah. and those people bought the furniture. Yes. Architects, uh, there was a, a segment of the population that dove right in and bought a lot of this stuff. So they would specify, occasionally specify, West Coast design for the houses. Exactly. And, and it, you see that as well in Western Homes and Living. Totally. And a lot of people from BC, as you know, cars came around and they and trains and they started going down the coast. Our aesthetic became a whole lot mm -hmm. like California's. Well, and also plane travel. Exactly. You know, the Orient opened up, and people got uh, became very uh, aware of the Japanese aesthetic, and uh, you know, got some very the, the house designs of the early '60s reflect a kind of interest in Japanese sensibilities. The furniture, too, to some degree, the sparseness, and that could be a lot more. Uh, exactly. saleable yeah. and desirable. Of all the things that you've discovered, what would be your favorite find? Ooh. Uh, well, sometimes they're not always furniture. Um, I'm thinking about that all the time. I mean, yeah. there's the material that's coming to the bag, the furniture that I'm wanting to donate, um, I think it has a huge cultural importance. Um, and so I think the collection as a whole is very important. But I have all sorts of things like bowls and you know wood, woodenware and and even photographs and things like that that I really treasure. Um, I'd really have to think about. But I, I, I think I think one of the things I really like is a plywood chair, a do-it-yourself plywood chair. I've always loved that piece. How do you determine the value of things? You know, I have to think now that the way that I go about the value of things, you know, it's a journey you have to go on because I can't, 
you know, I don't know today if, uh, let's say, a Winnipeg coconut chair walks through the door right now. What's the value of that today, Mary? Well, I don't know until I go over it because mm -hmm. is it, what's the state of the laminate? What's the state of this? What's the state of that? And what I know is that I would buy that chair in any godforsaken condition it ever came yeah, in they're, because... They're, it's a real part of it. It's the top of the hierarchy. Exactly, because sort of, yeah. you have to. Yeah. Because it's worth it because there's so few of them. Mm -hmm. And so you wouldn't want that to just go off into the great unknown because it'd be horrible that the chair didn't get rescued. Because sometimes you have to rescue the furniture from people that have no idea what it is. I can only go by my 30 years experience yeah. and my interest in the market. Yeah. And I don't want to lowball Canadian stuff because I think it's unfair. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to value it according to the rest of the market. So what would that chair go for in England? What would it go for in the United States? What would it go for? Blah, 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 blah. It's what, it's the whole picture. I've always come here and appreciated Mary's store because if you don't support this store, then this whole thing won't happen. You know, we need, we need a place where people can come and see things and possibly buy them, share information. It's sort of like a community. community. It is. And it's, it's a money maker. Obviously, people make money. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The point is, though, that it's a real focal point for people who are interested in this and, you know, other modern design. It's not just local.